business session. Right, let's just begin at the start. Ah, now we're going through my whole slide. Let's try that again. Okay. Welcome everybody. Um, we are one of the questions that were, I was asked to revise is case statements. So we will be going through that today. Please remember if you have any more questions, now is the time that you ask me so that we can get as much revision in and I will also be covering some work. As from next week, I must say it's been a bit hectic trying to get all the lessons every single day. I will be scheduling your lessons every second day so that it gives me a bit more time because I'm also running the online um, schedule at the moment. Okay, so today is case statements. So I'm first going to just give you a, a, an explanation of case statements. Another type of decision-making structure in Delphi is the case statement. So instead of using a sequence of cascading if then else if statement. So I can do the same, there's three ways to do the same type of code. An if then else statement with cascading, a case statement or an array. So it depends on what your question is asking that which one you're going to use. So. The case statement provides a tidy way of dealing with decision making, especially if I need to make more than one decision. The cascading if then else if statement allows you to execute a block of code amongst different alternatives. If you are checking on a value of a single variable of the if then else if statement, it is better to rather use a case statement. So, let us look at the case statement syntax. You're going to write case, then whatever your variable is called. For example, iCars, if you are looking at a list of different types of cars, then of your value one, then statement one, colon, statement one, value two, colon, statement two, Value three, statement three. It can be as long as you want. The final one you will then use else. Statement four. Very important, you have to have an end to your case statement. There's no begin, but there is an end. Okay, so let's take note of a few things. Start with the keyword case followed by your variable, followed by the keyword of. There is no semicolon. Again, see, we're starting to pick up, there's a couple exceptions when we don't use the semicolon at the end of a line. The case statement does not have a begin, but it has an end. The variable can be the name of any variable of type of integer or character. <coughs> different cases would be value one, value two, value three. Refer to the cases against which variable will be compared and must be the same data type as the variable. Now this is one very important part of the case statement. I can't have integer and string. It needs to be integer, integer or string, string, char, char. Okay, they have to be the same data type. Each case is followed by a colon, not an assign, just simply a colon, like the same way when you declare a variable. The statements following the colon indicates what code must be executed for that case. For example, value two, statement two must be executed. If more than one statement needs to be executed in a case, it must be in a begin end block. Okay. So let's carry on. So let's take a look of an example. Furthermore, a case can be represented by an integer, 
for example, five, a character, A, or a range, so three to five. Okay, so I could say um, that an A symbol, okay, is going to be from 80 to 100. Okay, so that is a nice question that they, when they are testing case statements, is asking you to assign a symbol to a student's mark. If the same action is required for more than one case, then cases can be grouped as follows. For example, now you actually got this in one of your tests. Case C letter of A E I O U, then my statement, show message val. So if I pick up any of these letters, it must state val. Else, show a message, not a val. So do you see you can use case statements in different ways? I can even use them in show messages. So here, grouped cases are separated by commas. But remember, each string must have single quotations around. When a match is found during the comparison, as by, therefore it is true, the control of the program passes to that case and the code of that case is executed and the case statement is exited. So it's not going to keep testing just in case there's something else. The minute it finds a true, it ends the case statement. The else statement is optional. You do not have to have an else. You can actually just declare A is this B, C, D, E. Okay. It is used to provide a default if none of the cases match the, var the variable. Okay. Let's take a look at an activity. So this activity is cool drink selection. A user makes a choice from a radio button group and depending upon the, the choice he or she makes, the following is displayed. So my radio buttons, here are my different cool drink flavors, Coca-Cola, cream soda, and to grape. Now, depending on which radio button, now case statements work really well with radio buttons. So if you are gonna incorporate a radio button into your pack, um, or a radio group, I suggest you use a case statement, okay? Remember in your patch, you have to have a text file and you have to have an array. We are still going to cover arrays. So when I select Coca-Cola, it must give you a message saying you selected Coca-Cola. If I clicked on Fanta Grape, then it must say you selected Fanta Grape. So let's see how this is done. So there's my picture of how it would be you, I suggest you go and try this, go and write your own little program, create a radio group with different flavors and see if you can incorporate a case statement using this video. Okay, the code below, the first way I'm going to show you is how to use an if then else statement. Then we're gonna use the same code or the same idea and write it with a case statement. With a nested if then else statement. If I selected item, remember radio buttons begin counting by zero, then show message you selected a Coca Cola. Else, if I selected item equals one, then show message cream soda. Else, if I selected two, show you selected grapefruit or grape, Fanta grape. Else, you have not selected a cool drink. Do you see? So it is possible to write it in a, a nested if then else. But you are now in grade 11, so I'm going to require you to write more efficient code. Okay? This I would expect from a grade 10. But you are now in grade 11, so you should be able to use case statements. So let's see how we are going to do the case statement. Now we're going to write the same code, code using a case statement, create an on-click event for the select button. So here is my code. 
case statement. Procedure button select. I create my variable. I select an index and it is an integer. Begin. I'm going to assign the items from my radio group to my I selected index. There. The case I selected index, which I created over there. And now I'm going to specify what is going to be written here. Okay. So if zero is selected, you selected Coca Cola, one would be cream soda, and three would be Fanta grape. Else, show message, you have not selected a cool drink. Okay. So here you set up your variable and here you are defining where the information is going to come from. The case statement is a lot easier to read and use. Do you see it makes more sense? Um, if I go back there, look at, where is that? Uh, sorry, I've gone over it. See, look at this code. Yes, I will be able to do it but um, it's a lot of information to try and process. And at some point, I, if I get confused, imagine I had 10 or 15 different options, I would eventually not know if then what I'm doing. Okay, so try do a case statement. It is a better version um, of code. When you are done, you click on save and run. Okay. So, and here's the message, let me just move the camera out the way, um, that if you had um, selected a, a Coke, then it is going to give you that message. Okay, great. Let's put that up here. Hopefully it won't be in the way. Okay, let's carry on. Oh, no, my camera is now completely in the way. Ha, oh, let's try that. Okay, the case statement below shows the following. Checking if a variable falls within a range of values. Checking if a variable has one of many individual values or combining a range of values with individual values. So this is a snippet of code from another program. We are just going to work through it. So I start, I write case, my variable, I number, this is what I'm testing for of here i'm using an array 1 to 99 show message number is between 1 and 100 so this morning just if you are wondering why it's um showing there it is going to be the values 1 to 99 then i min or i max number is a minimum or a maximum and here this shows a variety, so minus 1, 101 to 9,999, and it's going to give us an error message because it is the number is illegal. Else, number does not meet any of the requirements. As this example shows, the case statement can also contain an else condition, which is activated when the variable does not match any of the values. So, you need to give the option that either the user didn't click something or they clicked something else that wasn't one of the options that you wanted. Then you can use an else. Or it is the last option. So you've selected all the ones at the top and the final one, if I haven't selected one at the top, then it must be the last one. Okay, so let's take a look here. See, I told you they love asking this question. Assign a symbol to a mark. Example 5.17, percentage to symbol converter. Learners receive a percentage mark as well as a symbol for certain educational courses in South Africa. These symbols might be allocated as follows. An A symbol would be 80 to 100%. A B symbol, 70 to 79%. F would be 0 to 69%. Maybe we should incorporate this for IT. You guys are all so clever. We can say that so, um, we, the pass rate will be a 70%. Mm. 
one of the computer courses that I did, um, the pass rate was 75%. So know that when you do go into IT, um, the your pass rate is going to be so much higher than just a 50. Okay, I'm just going to activate the chat here if anyone has a question. Okay. Okay, let us take a look at, oh, I'm just actually going to mute this camera for a bit. Um, it keeps getting in the way. Okay, so this is an example, and I wanted to show you the pseudocode on the left and a flowchart on the right. Now, I know I have been saying it from the point that you're in grade 10, and I don't see you guys doing it much nowadays. It is extremely important that for every piece of code that you're doing, that you're either writing pseudocode or you're doing a flowchart. This is a question in your final exam in the trick. Okay, so let's see. Here, I'm going to say begin. The user input must be assigned to mark, so I set the mark. If the mark is great or equal to 80%, set the symbol to an A. Else, if the mark is greater or equal to 70%, set the symbol to B, else set the symbol to F. Then return the symbol. Now let's look at it in a flowchart. Begin. Read my mark. So my user either uses it as a um, edit box or a radio button, whichever they use to enter their mark. It's going to do my first check. Remember, your ICT, check if it's greater than 80%. If true, sign it to A, and then return your symbol. If it's false, go and check. Is it greater or equal to 70? If it's true, set it to B and return the symbol. Else, if it's false, set the symbol to F and return the symbol and end your program. Okay. So let's carry on. So use the pseudocodes and flowcharts, sorry, it dropped two letters there, plus the instructions below to create the program. So you will design the, um, the following user interface. So there is a label, an edit box, and a button. The user is going to enter a grade, and when the user clicks on the, the a convert button, it needs to display a message. Create a local integer variable called I percentage. Number four, obtain the value of the I percentage from the text box. Remember to convert your text to an integer. Okay, so let's see how do we go about that. Okay, then we are going to use a case statement to display our symbol. So I start my case statement, case, I percentage, remember we declared that earlier, of 0 to 69 is going to show message F. 70 to 79, show message B. 80 to 100, so show message A. Else, show message invalid mark. So if I entered 101, what message will I get? I will get an invalid mark. Okay, you will then save the, the test application. The case statement reads the value of I percentage and then compares it with the ranges from the case statement. If it finds a match, it uses the show message dialog box to create a pop-up box that you will, do you see the pop-up box over there? Okay, with the symbol. If no match is found, the else condition activates, which creates a message with the words invalid mark. Okay, so as you can see, 
A case statement is really not that difficult. I just want to check. Yes, that's the end of that slide. I'm going to quickly go out here. Uh, no, previous one, escape. And I'm going to create an additional slide here. And get activity here. So now you are going to um, answer some questions for me. We've got about nine minutes left. So let us get an activity here. Uh, let me just find it. Okay. So what we've got here is just put it into another font color activity 5.15 and you are going to write a program to convert length um Bukang, you're asking can we use any variable for a case statement yes whatever you decide to call that variable as long as you have declared it um, either locally or globally. Okay, so it can be um, uh, S or um, let's just go back here. I'm just going to backtrack. Oh, we need to get the right mouse here. Um, I here I did percentages. Um, if I was doing cars, it would be I cars. Remember, we're working with integers here. Um, so, whatever your option is. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, do you always add item index when using a case statement in the radio button? Yes. Yes, you do. Um, so, it's really important, especially you are going to use that in matric in a more in-depth way. So, make sure that you understand how to use that. Um, I will find some activities for us to practice that. Okay. Okay, so we are saying here uh, to convert the lengths. Um, the link unit according to the table below. Yeah, oh, can't spell, sorry, below. I'm going to quickly open a document here so that you can see the activity. Uh, sorry, I've gone off there. Let me just 